Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the conclusions. Actually, I wanted to record this with the zip wrap then I forgot about it. Then I pressed stop recording. So anyway, this is the conclusions. So basically is to sum up you know, the, big, the, the biggest things and some you know, personal opinions of what is happening around in the front line. And, uh, and we go, of course, to the you node know, where everyone's favorite right now, the happy front. Uh, at the khaki front, uh, Russian forces are continuing their offensive. Uh, the, they are still attacking uh, in May in a uh, various direction or uh, there is a three four different directions one is towards Lipsy, towards Neskushni and then there is one in the Stadisia region as well as one in the Voschans region and this is also how I break up the front line with the Lipsy sector the Kushne sector, Stadisia sector, as well as the Voschan sector. And uh, probably this is also how they drew the how they draw in the military terms where they have the front line they will you will see that uh, there is this uh, each battalion or which brigade will have its own sector of uh, where they manage so that could be a possibility as well and uh so all the brigades and whatever they will have their own independent divisions on what they want to do on a tactical level to achieve their set out object objective so however um so the rush the ukrainian so the main so i just want to sum up a bit about the situation at the Kharkiv offensive or the Kharkiv front, the Ukrainians have uh, sent in uh, a lot of reinforcement into particularly the Lipsy sector as well as, uh, as the Voschan sector. Uh, the Ukrainians have sent so much reinforcement and they actually are able to conduct counter-offensive operations. Particularly, I have already mentioned quite a bit about the Voschans region where the Ukrainian forces actually managed to cross the river, probably through this, river, uh, through this bridge, uh, the Hukyanov-Nivka Street uh, bridge, and they managed to uh, send in armor, in fact, and uh, managed to hold back the Russians and uh, bring the fight to the Russians, in fact. And uh, they start to you know, attack the Russians instead of just defending their, their goal on the counter-offensive. However, it doesn't seem to face the Russians. The Russians continue to expand southward and uh, to, to increase their firm control over in this uh, central part of this uh, first chance. Uh, particularly, you know, try to secure the entire northern bank of the Voschar River. However, with this incursion, of course, they are not going to do it so easily. So heavy fighting is currently happening um, in this, this this front line, where the, the two forces are grinding each other, you know, like the tectonic plates. So this is currently happening around here. So uh, then um, the others... Over at the Lipsy sector, the, the reinforcement have also, you know, made a huge impact. Uh, on this battle, uh, the Ukrainians are currently counterattacking over at Klipo, uh, uh, Klipoke and uh, also managed to successfully hold back the Russians over in the region of Lipsy. The Russians have not been able to make any advances in this area here for some time already. Um, so the last time we have some updates around here, it seems that the Russians are expanding the zone of control very quickly and they bring the fighting to Lipsy. Uh, to the Lipsy uh, itself, I thought the Battle of Lipsy would have begun. However, uh, it doesn't seem to be the case, and uh, the Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainians managed to hold back the Russians, and there is hardly any frontline changes around here. So the we are, I'm probably expecting the Ukrainians to hit and capture uh, Klipoke if they could, and uh, this will compromise the rear positions, and uh, this will then allow the Ukrainians to hit Lukyansi or you no know, hit the other. Uh, rear positions if they choose to so this is the uh, this is the lipsy you no know, sector situation so uh, otherwise the other sectors are pretty quiet uh, the nekushne situation is of course the as usual a uh, very uh, foggy thing whereas uh Hoptivka is also very foggy this is even worse <clears throat> because uh, Russian, force, uh, Russian sources claim that they have captured Hotivka only to have zero reports since. Uh, however, the latest information, uh, the Joe location, shows that uh, the Russians could be at Hotivka because the artillery is striking Tok Tokarivka instead of in Hotivka. So I'm uh, not sure. Uh, so we'll just have to wait for more information. Uh, there's always this threat you know, from the Russians to you know, enter in some other sectors, uh, but uh, it never came about. Uh, and then uh, one more sector, of course, is the Stadisia sector. Russian forces have fully captured uh, Boravaka, Boravaka, and uh, they are trying to uh, attack Stadisia. And uh, however, this Stadisia has been already declared as captured by the Russian Defense Ministry since the 18th of May. And uh, we still have fighting being reported at Stadisia 
until even the past 24 hours. So we we are we are not sure uh, if this report is talking about the fighting in the center or in the outskirt, but whatever it is, uh, this this uh is definitely a massive gray zone right now, rather than a firm control like Vuruvaka is. Vuruvaka seems to be a lot more firmer uh, of, of a Russian capture. So uh so this the area. I think the next major front line I would say should be at the uh, uh, Velikan Novosilka sector. So at the Velikan Novosilka sector of the Donetsk front, so this Velikan Novosilka, uh, at this sector, the Russians have launched a major offensive into Staro Mayoske and they are expanding control very quickly uh, in this uh, in this region. They have captured half of the settlement already. They are trying to push in Uruzaini as well, but uh, the Uruzaini one uh, didn't fare as well. And uh, the Russians, of, of course, used, um, if you have watched my other reports you may have understood that uh they have tried new strategies this time now they use motorcycles to do quick assaults uh, because motorcycles drive so fast you know that they can just suddenly appear at your defensive uh, defensive position you know out of a sudden and and you no know, and kill you all so that is a kind of a thing that is currently happening around here the russians are also seemingly uh pushing towards makarivka in this direction while they are pushing at uruzai and start of my escape that is a uh, this is a sensible move. It makes sense, and uh, if you are able to cut off the road between Makarivka and uh, Staromayovsky, in fact, if the Russians can entrench themselves around some of these tree lines around here, Staromayovsky will just collapse. It just fall. The, this is just not possible to hold it uh, without uh, this uh, reinforcement road uh, in the south, uh, in the north of it. Uh, the next uh, major front line, uh, the action of I think is over at uh, the Battle of Krasnohorivka. Russian forces are attacking in uh, multiple directions, and uh, there are still there is still a lot of heavy fighting around this a uh, uh, refractory uh plan, the refractory plan. Uh, and then the Russians in uh, yesterday's report have expanded their control westward. Uh, so this allows Russians to have a lot more flexibility and decision what they can do. So I, we will definitely see the Ukrainians have done very well in terms of uh, holding back the Russians so far but the krasno horifka did not collapse very quickly uh despite they did lose ground quite a lot because they are unable to deal with the turtle tanks but it seems like you no know, things have evened out a bit because maybe of reinforcement you know uh like we have seen the return of some of these uh, atgm missiles the ukrainians seems to have a massive shortage of it and it seems like because after the passing of the new military aid deals uh all these new ammos coming in anti-tank guided missiles and whatnot so it seems to have even the odds a bit so the ukrainians have a better fight right now uh so so probably uh the reason why the the slowdown at the fk front uh is a uh, is currently in the rather stalemate-ish situation the russians are unable to break out uh anymore or they are un they are not planning to break out uh anytime soon the so the Russian front line, especially in the northern sector where it was the breakout region, uh, did not have any much, did not have really much changes in terms of the front line. The the main push right now for the Russians is not in the north, but in the south. Uh, the Russians are pushing Umansky. So they are pushing Umansky. They are pushing over at Umans, uh, sorry, Netolove. So Umansky, Netolove. This is the two, two main places that the Russians are actually trying to push. And uh, in these two areas, Russian forces seems to be at the verge of capturing Netolove. They have captured basically almost all of the entire settlement already. Uh, there is still a little bit, you no know, tiny places left that you no know, the Russians should have fire control already. So not sure if the Ukrainians are you no know, there, but there is of course all these tree lines that need to be secured. You no, know? these tree lines around here is going to be. Uh, needed to be cleared before Netolove can be fully secured. Uh, so Netolove is already on the verge of collapsing. And then in the latest report, we re we saw that the Russians have taken uh, Umansky's uh, northern half and leaving a little bit of this uh, southern half of this uh, settlement, which means that the Russians can now pincer them uh, in two different directions right now. In fact, three different directions. And this will, this will definitely force a Ukrainian withdrawal from Umansky. So, uh, so the otherwise ADFK front has actually went really quiet uh the Bakhmut front is a very weird place uh from i have always been saying that uh the chastifia situation uh, the russians actually do not have the real uh intention to push through 
because this area here is just way so it's just so difficult to fight in and uh, it's so heavily entrenched so so well defended the russians just taking their own sweet time they are just bombarding and bombarding and bombarding with artillery tos 1a with drones with lancers with uh air strikes helicopter strikes they are just grinding away the defenders that you know keep moving forward to try to go back to their defensive positions after their comrades may be killed so the the russians are just attritioning away over the chasifia sector however in the southern side uh the russians suddenly launch attack uh, with russian forces previously located in the middle of chasifia creating uh this uh very uh, obscene looking uh, ship on the screen however uh based on russian defense ministry they claim that they have captured klishievka some members have already mapped it like this uh confirm showing that the russians have taken all of this uh, this is not dpa's position because it's not how we do mapping uh, over dpa uh, when i say we is actually only, only me but you know but it's not how i do the mapping so uh, we will definitely have to wait because the russian defense ministry have quite a number of uh, claim capture that is not corroborated you know like just now earlier i've already mentioned in the khaki front that's already one so uh, and Robotine itself also took some time to corroborate. So uh, we will definitely have to you know, continue to wait and see because this high ground over here is not easy to capture. So for the Russians to confirm a capture of Klishevka, you to, to need to capture this high ground is not easy. And I, I believe that we should see evidence you know, of that happening. Uh, if not, then I don't think so. You know? Klishevka is... It's a, it's a place where we have a lot of false positive or no or yeah or false negative whatever you want to call it uh in the past because there's always claims about klishevka then they always get invalidated because klishevka itself is in the low ground the high ground overlooking klishevka is the key to you know securing klishevka uh the capture of ngfk is not a surprise but however we have no mapping to confirm where exactly how it works though so we will definitely hold back in terms of the frontline change that until you know there's a second source that or the russian defense ministry release a map then at least we can actually you know put it in so otherwise the bakhmut has been quiet uh sievers is another major offensive places where it's basically very very underreported. personally i do not watch other youtube channels i do not know if they actually tell you anything about the sievers front that there, there is some major change and particularly over in the southern part in the rosalivka versailles region this and this entire area here this is actually a high ground this is actually a series of hills where i mentioned many many times that it's pivotal for the russians to capture if uh if they want to secure vasily uh and rosalivka is just in that important and uh, i did draw before that the russians will are attacking around this high ground and then they were going to swing westward and in fact they exactly did just that and they have captured half of these hills already and they even continue to follow through and allegedly getting very very close to Rosalevka. so um this development here is massive it's very 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 important uh strategically speaking this this is going to collapse the entire uh ukrainian front line uh, in this area here and allow the russians to actually penetrate into the rear positions very very quickly um and if you look north of this area here based on the map uh, based on these uh, entrenchments there is only entrenchment being uh mapped around here there is nothing on top because it's not the Russians are not supposed to get past you no know, these heavy entrenchments. But now, based on Russian claims, they are there now. They are here now, and which means that the Ukrainians will have to start to entrench themselves in all these three lines to try to slow down the Russians in the Sivers front. Uh, don't let them reach Vimka. So the this front line is particularly you know very, uh, uh yeah something to really take note of because. The, if the Russians you no know, go take all of this, then Ivano Darevka, Sperny, all these positions will become pointless. It will just is it's just not sensible to hold it anymore. So uh this breakthrough is significant. However, it is also important to note. I said this many, many times the zip rap, but no, most people don't watch zip rap. Is that the the 
the commanders or the Russian forces in the civil front seem to have very good operational discipline. We don't have any information you no know, leaking from this area here very often. So we do not know what's currently happening. Maybe the next update, we already see a, a bigger frontline change uh, over in the, in the Rosdalevka region. We do not know. So we're going to continue to wait. And uh, otherwise, over at the Oskil front. So this entire, this is actually Oskil River. And um, the this entire front line, the Russians are making a lot of pushes. Uh, and basically, I feel that they are largely in more like a no diversionary kind of a objective. It doesn't feel like a very major offensive uh, that they are trying to capture grounds. There are some grounds being captured, particularly over in this area here in the uh, Kaislivka region. But all the other sites are seems to be you know, very probing uh, or very probish in nature. The only this area here seems to be a bit more serious with the Russian forces previously captured Tabaivka, Kramalne, and then now they are trying to head towards uh, Berestovit and trying to capture this. And uh, they also previously captured uh, these two locations. They are now attacking. Uh, Ivanivka. So no, this area here is more mean, meaningful because it can disrupt the entire Kupians front for the Ukrainians and uh, push the front line all the way to the Oskil River. Uh, but we just continue, continue, continue to wait. I think the, the forces over here don't have a lot to work with, I think. So we will just have to wait and see. So anyway, this is the summary uh, for the uh, day of 820 and our uh, and some of some of this stuff that I I didn't have managed you no know, I didn't manage to have time to really you know share a bit of my opinions. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching. Do let me know about the conclusions. Do you like me to do more of this? I think the last time I asked this, a lot of people liked it, but I never have time to do it uh, because it takes additional energy to to really do it. So anyway, press the like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys. Oh, and also the con I will, um, my planning now is that the conclusions I will post it on the main channel, so then I post the separate on the war channel, so that I don't double post if I can. But we shall see. We shall see how it goes. I'll see you guys in the next update.